Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be looking at Egypt's digital transformation process. We've been talking about it for quite some time. We're going to be following up on the developments regarding this file. But before we start doing that, let's check out some of the main stories making the news today. And we'll start off with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who directed today to support the military and defense industrial development sector. In addition to the transfer and localization of advanced technology in this context. This came during President Sisi's meeting with Lieutenant General Ahmad Khalid, Commander of the Strategic Command and Supervisor of the Military Industrialization, and Colonel Ahmad Aydil Mujahid of the Strategic Command. The presidential spokesperson said the meeting dealt with following up on efforts to promote and develop military industrialization. This helps to achieve the optimal utilization of capabilities and accumulated expertise that Egypt possesses in this regard. For his part, Lieutenant General Ahmad Khalid presented plans to develop military industrialization and production, including the exchange of experiences with international entities in this field, as well as the use of global technology in industrialization. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi also followed up today on the executive and constructive measures regarding the development of neighborhoods in the governorates of Cairo and Alexandria. This came during President al-Sisi's meeting with Major General Le Amir Sayyid Ahmed, Presidential Advisor for the Urban Planning, and Major General Le Ahmed Azizi, the Director of the Major National Projects in the Armed Forces. Presidential spokesperson said the meeting dealt with following up on the executive and constructive situation measures in the residential neighborhoods of Cairo, Al Matariya, Ain Shams, and Al Salam, as well as efforts to raise the efficiency of Ghith Al Anab and Western Alexandria. This includes raising the efficiency of integrated services system and infrastructure of drinking water and sanitation as well as paving and lighting landscapes and urban coordination. And Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri holds talks today with Palestine's Foreign Minister Riyad al-Malki. The meeting reviews developments to the Palestinian issue and means of restarting the Middle East peace process. These were some of the stories making the news today, but now turning our attention to the digitalization of life in Egypt. Uh, before we start talking to our guests tonight, let's check out this report regarding digital Egypt that serves its vision for Egypt 2030. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. with Egypt Vision 2030 and Egypt's digital transformation strategy, the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology embarked on building Digital Egypt. Digital Egypt is an all-encompassing vision and plan laying the foundations for the transformation of Egypt into a digital society. To usher this transition to a digital society and build a strong digital economy, Digital Egypt is built on a number of significant planks. MCIT seeks to build and foster an ecosystem that encourages entrepreneurship and spurs creativity. It also endeavors to promote research and development, innovation and entrepreneurship in the field of ICT to drive sector growth, support sustainable national development and position Egypt as a regional innovation hub. MCIT adopts effective policies on ICT-based innovation through concerted efforts among stakeholders, including the government sector, 
academic and research institutions, financial institutions, the private sector, and support networks that incubate creative ideas and convert them into value-added products to meet the sustainable development challenges. MCIT is keen on integrating advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence in the digital system and activating its applications to support decision-making within the framework of implementation of the national strategy. Egypt's artificial intelligence strategy seeks to create an artificial industry in Egypt including the development of skills, technologies, ecosystem, infrastructure and governance mechanisms to ensure its sustainability and competitiveness. Egypt has embarked on a number of key initiatives to address Egypt's developmental goals in the key sectors using artificial intelligence and formed the National AI Council which is the governing body for Egypt's artificial intelligence strategy. In addition, it has developed the National Artificial Intelligence Strategy in collaboration with the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. The Innovation Hubs project is an initiative by the government and the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology implemented through the Technology Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. It aims to support and assist students, entrepreneurs, small medium-sized enterprises and startups to become key actors in bringing digital transformation within the reach of all industry sectors. The project offers a unique innovative solution simultaneously addressing a compilation of root causes of unemployment in realistic and pragmatic ways by uniting different vital services for the growth of any business in one location easily accessed by youth seeking to develop their business plans or already in business. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Mohammed Khalif, the Innovation and Digital Transformation Consultant and member of the ASRT Council for ICT. Dr. Khalif, thank you very much for joining us this evening. It is my pleasure to be here. Pleasure, sir. Dr. Khalif, now, before we start talking about uh, Digital Egypt, uh, supporting the Egypt 2030, uh, vision to achieve sustainable development. Yeah. Now, we were talking before uh, going on air on the three main stages of the digital transformation, which is basically digitization, digitalization, and the transformation, the digital transformation. Yes. Now, we've been talking about the ICT and technology here on the show for quite some time now. Where are we in these three stages and how easy or difficult is it to move into a, a whole transformation of application and culture in terms of digitization, digitalization and the transformation? Uh, let us explore first uh, the concept of digitization, digitalization and digital transformation. It is very important to highlight uh, what are the key differences between the, t uh, the three terms uh, which, uh, w yani which has been used, uh, they have been used by the media um, uh, for, uh, interchangeably and yes. uh, we have to differentiate between the, uh, the three um, uh, terms. Uh, first of all, the digitization is applying or turning services and products into a digital format, not necessarily changing any of the processes uh, behind these products or services. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing, uh, for example, if we are uh, scanning a document and converting it into uh, some sort of a digital format, then we are doing uh, the digitization uh, step. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we are applying uh, all the infrastructure training, um, uh, making, um, um, yeah, any, um, empowering a government with uh, equipments, uh, PCs, laptops, etc., then we are uh, still in the digitization phase. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, if we uh, uh, have finished uh, the digitiz digitization f phase, we are looking for the digitalization. Uh, 
Digitalization is more about using the technology to, to improve processes, uh, uh, creating efficiencies, mm -hmm. um, uh, attracting uh, economic, uh, uh, attracting investments, uh, uh, achieving economic impact uh, of applying the technology. Technology is not about using the technology itself. Mm -hmm. It's about achieving a result. Uh, mm -hmm. And the result has, uh, has to be aligned with uh, the vision and uh, what we really need to do. Then, if we have all the digitization efforts and digitalization efforts, uh, right, and they are all uh, interlinked together, uh, 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 with the aim to achieve a greater goal like uh, economic prosperity, uh, uh, achieving uh, higher GDP for the country, etc. And we are utilizing all the digitization and digitalization projects to achieve this uh, goal, mm -hmm. then we are in the digital transformation phase. That's why digital transformation is not a sprint, it is a marathon. Mm -hmm. So it, it needs a lot of effort and it is accumulative. So we cannot say that uh, we have achieved all what we need from digital transformation, although we are uh, uh, spending a lot of uh, money, a lot of effort has been uh, uh, pushed to uh, this uh, direction, but uh, uh, the real outcome of the digital transformation will, uh, yani, uh, will be on, uh, uh, highlighted if we um, uh, increase more integrated mm -hmm. um, digital technologies with what we really need um, as, as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking to, uh, to have some sort of integration between our uh, needs, our uh, nation needs, and uh, the digital technologies. Mm -hmm. This is the key area to achieve what we are looking for from digital trans uh, transformation in general and applying the digital technologies. Yes. And where is Egypt? among those three phases uh, are we done with the digitization process because we see a lot of uh, the governmental and societal services we see them uh, computerize um, uh, digitalize and everything where are we are we done with the dig uh, digitization because it does sound like uh, a lengthy process that takes it a is. lot of time. <laughs> so where are we among these three phases? From uh, my perspective, I see that we are still in between phase one and phase uh, two. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but, but we are uh, moving ahead with uh, um, a speedy base. Uh, I, I think, I think uh, comparing to other nations who have been in this uh, situation before us, we are doing uh, good. Uh, however, we need to uh, have some sort of uh, uh, national priorities mm -hmm. uh, and the thematic uh, sort of uh, uh, th these national priorities. Uh, like uh, if we are talking now, right now, uh, the uh, Egyptian reform mm -hmm. is focusing on three areas. It's focusing on manufacturing, agriculture and uh, ICT as platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if we are talking about uh, these three areas and we are focusing all our efforts from uh, the government, the private sector, the academia mm -hmm. to support these uh, areas with digital technologies and uh, encouraging youth and startups to engage in these areas and we uh, uh, give them incentives uh, to innovate and uh, participate in competitions and find a proper uh, engagement model with the government, mm -hmm. then we, uh, we will be much faster than we are now. Mm -hmm. Well, the government has, I mean, it is currently spending a lot of money on the ICT sector. But as you've mentioned, it's not just a governmental process. It's, it also involves, heavily involves, the private sector. Now, to have this digital integration within our daily lives, to, as you've mentioned, translate it into uh, economic growth, a growth in the GDP, and uh, really a, a transformation in the way of life, instead of just uh, digital services and governmental societal services. Now, 
who bears the biggest responsibility for this? Is it the, uh, is it the government, the public sector, or is it, is it the private sector? Because in terms of academia, we've seen the, the government recently open a lot of new universities and uh, creating certificates and diplomas specifically for uh, ICT and information uh, technology. I think it is uh, um, um, the government is doing a great job in, in creating new venues for learning mm -hmm. and for attracting youth to learn uh, digital uh, technologies and we need more mm -hmm. okay and uh, we need uh, more of uh, some sort of a national uh, initiatives more national initiatives for uh, uh, converting uh, people who are not working in the um, uh, area of engineering and computer science to uh, work in, in this area like uh, uh, graduates from low, low schools uh, uh, art school etc uh, they they can participate and they can uh, be used as uh, techy or digital mm -hmm. uh, talents I would say um, if we if we have some sort of a national uh, programs for uh, in this direction uh, in addition to uh, engineers mm -hmm. I, I, I would say that we need a lot of people to be uh, in the digital uh, sector not only for uh, Egyptian needs mm -hmm. because we are exporting a lot of services a lot of companies uh, uh, international companies multinationals uh, they are coming to egypt to uh, uh, open de development centers and recruiting uh, our youth and uh, they um, encouraging them to innovate and we have mm -hmm. a lot of successes in this direction we have done a lot in this uh, direction what i i really see important to move ahead uh, uh, is to look at our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think this sort of integration you are talking about between the government and uh, the private sector is the key uh, in this uh, dilemma, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, this integration has to come through uh, not giving uh, people uh, or startups or companies uh, the incentives only, but finding a business model to encourage the private sector to participate in government projects and investing in the government projects related to, uh, to technology. Mm -hmm. We had um, uh, before uh, a law, it, it was um, uh, it is old one, mm -hmm. uh, to, for public-private partnership mm -hmm. uh, between, uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, there for uh, engaging the private sector with the government uh, to en encourage the private sector to put money as investment in technology for uh, projects the government w won't invest in. Uh, we have a lot of projects. Uh, government cannot invest in all in digitalizing mm -hmm. or uh, the digital transformation of all areas of Egypt. We have a, we we have we are a, a big nation. We have uh, 100 million. We need training for people. We need talents. We need uh, infrastructure. We need a lot of, of things. Uh, government cannot be uh, the only uh, player in this uh, direction. That's why uh, I would say uh, activating or uh, revitalizing uh, this uh, uh, law of public-private partnership uh, mm -hmm. between the government and the uh, tech uh, companies would solve this uh, dilemma. And this will attract a lot of investments from multinationals and uh, companies, foreign companies to come to Egypt and um, participate in such uh, projects. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, let me explain more about this. If we are talking about automating uh, a critical uh, um, a, sector like uh, the uh, tourism, mm -hmm. for example, um, the government, uh, uh, in, or in order to uh, digitalize such sector, we, w we should pay a lot of money, mm -hmm. billions. Okay, that's why the, the, the key solution is to find the business model. What, what is the business, what is the most proper, uh, uh, yeah, proper business model for this is to uh, come up with um, um, a competition or a call for people to participate in the, uh, digitalizing the uh, tourism sector and then uh, the tech uh, companies uh, would apply and they invest 
in um, putting the infrastructure needed for digitalizing the tourism and in return they uh, they get revenue sharing revenue mm -hmm. sharing um, um, uh, model with the government this would um, uh, allow them to secure uh, cash in four five years ten years uh, according to the feasibility uh, study and then in this regard we uh, we will have both uh, very professional digitalization very professional implementation and we w it would not uh, cost us a lot of money as uh, in in um, uh, or spending a lot of money uh, by the government in this uh, area and this is uh, something uh, I would say it is implemented uh, worldwide and it is available everywhere. What we need uh, to do is to find the, uh, the right business model for engaging the government with the private uh, sector and especially startups. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, a, a lot of startups, they have passion, they, have, uh, they are uh, innovating. We have uh, startups who have um, uh, a lot of uh, advanced technologies in artificial intelligence, uh, in, uh, for example, in agriculture, in manufacturing, a mm -hmm. lot of areas, uh, a lot of needs. We, we need to encourage uh, uh, startups to have some sort of alliances with bigger companies and apply for such projects. Yes. Dr. Khalif, now you've mentioned uh, quite a few things, so let's break them down bit by bit. Okay. Starting off with the innovation, and uh, I mean, the government has already established about 11 applied innovation uh, centers in, in, in different government rates, and seven are already underway. However, if people do uh, get involved and participate within these innovation uh, centers. It, it might not be as uh, sophisticated as getting a university degree, but most of the youth are concerned about uh, creating applications, uh, doing online services, uh, I mean, engaging within the commercial sort of, or the most popular or common sense of the uh, digital services, not really being involved in manufacturing, agriculture, the industrial, the, the energy, as you've mentioned. How effective and how many more uh, centers do we need and, and how can we encourage having this sort of ideology uh, and in really planting this culture within youth? I mean, we're talking about youth and teenage years, early 20s as well. We are talking about transforming Egypt into a digital hub. Mm -hmm. So in order to have this sense of, uh, uh, of being a digital hub, we have to uh, uh, educate uh, our youth. Uh, we have to link. This is a missing link, I would mm -hmm. say, between the government needs, what we really need, and uh, the startups and uh, ideas. Um, usually in startups, and I have been in this business with, uh, uh, with the youth for many uh, years, we, um, uh, startups usually fail because uh, the number one uh, reason for failing in startups is the product market fit. fit. Mm -hmm. Product market fit. Startups, they uh, usually um, uh, have passion, uh, they, have, uh, they need quick solutions, so they start with innovating an app or something that uh, they feel it will uh, do a lot of successes, but they, when they uh, face the market, they have a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, then they uh, fail because the market is not accepting such app or or um, uh, a lot of competitors are there or they, they didn't have uh, enough innovation in the idea. They are not uh, get, um, uh, putting a lot of uh, effort in usability for the using the app, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, they fail and, uh, um, uh, and they start looking for another idea. Um, on the other hand, we have a very well established uh, market uh, facts. We, we need uh, people who, who, uh, who are working in agriculture, mm -hmm. improving the agriculture, improving our water management, uh, improving our waste management, uh, improving our green uh, economy. Uh, in general, we have uh, we have needs. We have uh, money uh, 
uh, we uh, ready to spend um, the, in, this, the, in these areas where Egypt is focusing also on manufacturing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in, in its uh, attempt to replace uh, imports. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we need uh, more startups working in the manufacturing sector and providing technology and services in this, uh, in this area. If we align those needs with uh, the startups and the, uh, the, uh, the vision of uh, uh, entrepreneurs, etc., then we will fill this gap. And we will guarantee that we will have much uh, higher success rates of uh, startups um, and we will have uh, what we call um, um, sustained growth for this mm -hmm. startup because they have the market. The market is there, but they don't see it. Mm -hmm. we, we have just to uh, uh, highlight the uh, uh, gaps in the market, what we need, what we really need. We, read, we, we need uh, uh, agriculture and manufacturing is, uh, is only an example. Uh, yes. we, we are talking about uh, education, we, uh, health care, we, we, uh, the opportunity there is tremendous. Mm -hmm. What we need uh, to do is to align these challenges with the startup uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. um, and instead of uh, uh, leaving them to play on their own and uh, uh, innovate and providing services we have to redirect their attention to uh, these uh, areas uh, by um, uh, redirecting funds to mm -hmm. special uh, uh, areas and we can have some sort of strategic plan for Egypt for the eco uh, uh, for the startup ecosystem so we have national priorities for five years mm -hmm. in the uh, agriculture uh, sector so all uh, startups who will uh, receive uh, funding from the government they will receive it in this area mm -hmm. and yes. that's it and after five years uh, we evaluate what we have done, we learn from uh, what we, uh, we, we have done and uh, initiate new initiative for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we have, we need to have uh, some sort of a national focus mm -hmm. in, uh, in some uh, areas and we cannot play in all, on all grounds. Yes. We cannot. <coughs> uh, we, we have to, uh, yani, uh, I have seen a lot of countries um, studying a lot of countries and mm -hmm. their initiatives and what they have done. They are focusing, some countries are focusing on electronics. Some are focusing on uh, security, mm -hmm. some are fo uh, focusing on uh, providing government services, uh, etc. We have to, uh, we have to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, have uh, our own theme, mm -hmm. our own uh, competitive uh, edge, mm -hmm. uh, uh, niche market. Yes. Uh, the, the, this, this is very important for us uh, to redirect our startups to national needs and uh, uh, align uh, their vision with the uh, uh, um, government vision. Yes. Well, you've mentioned, I mean, if we are talking about uh, integrating the startups uh, along with the national needs and the available market that not everybody is able to see, you've mentioned finding a proper business model. Now, to find a proper business model, is this the responsibility of the startup itself? or is it the responsibility of the government, the public sector, according to its national needs, or is it the responsibility of the private sector that could, be, that could work as uh, some sort of incubators for these startups? And then we come to the challenge, which is, is it a challenge of financing? Is it a challenge of competing or getting the, the know-how, the expertise, the engineers? Can we make use of the um, foreign investors and uh, other international uh, companies and corporations that are familiar and experienced within this field? It is a mutual uh, um, responsibility between the government and uh, uh, the other side with the private sector and uh, startups. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are talking about private sector and uh, startups, they have to pressure and push for uh, uh, offering the government uh, good uh, projects mm -hmm. they are capable of doing and they have references and they have the capability uh, uh, to, uh, to scale and to grow with them. Uh, and on the other hand, the government has to uh, facilitate such a process. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, both both ends, uh, if, the, if they um, work on, uh, as partners or if they uh, um, uh, participate as partners, uh, then, then we will have uh, much, much more uh, uh, speedy up, uh, uh, achievements uh, what we all want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the problem is not about financing. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, uh, the government, is, by the way, the government is, uh, is already uh, giving a lot of finance uh, for uh, startups. Mm -hmm. And we are attracting, um, I think, uh, in, in 2021, we have attracted uh, 500 million uh, dollars uh, in investments from uh, outside to mm -hmm. uh, uh, startups as foreign direct investment, which uh, uh, shows that we we have uh, the potential. Uh, we have, uh, and Egypt is progressing on uh, the uh, the government readiness for artificial intelligence. Uh, we have also uh, what we call uh, one uh, one hundred and thirty one percent increase in people uh, who have uh, uh, bank accounts mm -hmm. online bank accounts and wallets etc mm -hmm. it is, this is an uh, um, important and indicators that we are progressing yes. but in order to have uh, uh, such integration between what we really want uh, to achieve uh, through ICT and what we have we need to shake hands we ha between uh, uh, government mm -hmm. and uh, the private sector, and I think uh, the political uh, leadership, the leadership in, uh, of Egypt, is encouraging this uh, uh, mm -hmm. very uh, much. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, new laws, uh, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, encouraging uh, SMEs, small medium enterprises, uh, and uh, the startups, uh, etc. But uh, um, revitalizing these laws and uh, having them uh, on ground mm -hmm. is another story. That's mm -hmm. why we need the government to work on, uh, on ground mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, having uh, these uh, laws uh, implemented effectively, uh, efficiently with, uh, with uh, um, embl uh, government uh, employees and uh, ministries, etc. They have to, we have to align their vision. Mm -hmm. There is a gap between the, the top management, the top leadership, and the uh, government employee who is uh, implementing at the end uh, uh, the service. Mm -hmm. We have to bridge this gap. And this is the responsibility of the government, not mm -hmm. the private sector yes. or the, uh, the startup. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of efforts to, to, uh, to bridge this gap. And I have uh, seen uh, NTA, for example, National uh, Training Academy, is organizing uh, with the uh, Ministry of uh, Planning a lot of training for employees about mm -hmm. digital transformation and about uh, what they really uh, need to uh, to do to encourage transformation in their entities. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have seen also as uh, uh, Academy for Science uh, Research and Technology, they have a lot of, uh, they have what we call interlock program. Mm -hmm. Interlock program is uh, uh, investing in, uh, uh, in incubators and accelerators across uh, Egypt. MCIT for, uh, also uh, is, uh, uh, is having uh, the applied innovation centers and the creativa for mm -hmm. uh, uh, nurturing innovation across Egypt, uh, even upper Egypt, and uh, uh, also we have uh, the National Telecommunication Institute. So we have a lot yes. of entities who are uh, uh, nurturing the ecosystem with talents. Mm -hmm. But we need more initiatives. We need this, uh, 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 some sort of bridging this gap between the government and uh, the private sector, uh, some sort of aligning uh, the vision, uh, some sort of um, uh, having the uh, national priorities uh, for five years announced mm -hmm. and uh, declared for everyone, we will finance these startups in this, uh, in, in this sector uh, for agriculture, for manufacturing, etc. Yes. Well, <clears throat> if we are talking about all of these things and trying to align it and 
applied in the digital Egyptian ecosystem here. As you've mentioned, there needs to be a lot of uh, training and uh, development of the digital skills for, um, let's say, the government employees. Now, how reactive and responsive have been the employees in, in trying to shift into the, the whole uh, working and applying uh, and really applying their trade in terms of uh, digitally. How long does it take to have a, a total complete transformation of the skill sets of the government employee, for instance? I think it will uh, take uh, uh, time, as we uh, yani mentioned before, uh, digital transformation is a marathon, mm -hmm. not a sprint. So we need to tackle, it is a social change, it is a social learning process, it has to be sustained and it has to uh, go through uh, all the steps and uh, um, um, engage employees in the change, uh, in the change process. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, thi I think the government employees are doing uh, a good job uh, considering mm -hmm. that uh, we 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 have uh, yeah, seen uh, training programs for uh, the first time on this scale for mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, for for uh, yeah, we are talking about three years or four years only mm -hmm. okay um, um, teaching people how uh, what what is digital transformation uh, the uh, teaching them about the digital skills security cyber security mm -hmm. uh, how to use internet how to su safely use internet this is the, the, these are the basics, the infrastructure mm -hmm. for achieving what we are talking uh, about. Uh, it, it will take time, mm -hmm. but uh, at a certain threshold, I think the growth will go exponential. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to build up, we have to be patient with, uh, with, with accumulating our efforts and fixing the gap uh, here and there and and then uh, I, I think the outcome will uh, uh, will come at uh, the end of the tunnel and we will have exponential growth at uh, the end but uh, I, I cannot say that, that they are resisting mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, for any digital transformation process there is uh, uh, a resistance mm -hmm. any in mm -hmm. any country okay mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if we are talking uh, here uh, with the uh, help of the leadership of uh, uh, we have we, we are talk for the first time we are uh, uh, hearing uh, um, um, more about the digital transformation not not only from the ministry of communication Te telecommunication we are uh, hearing uh, statements about the digital transformation and the ict from ministry of uh, 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 planning mm -hmm. uh, uh, in industry and trade etc yes. a lot a lot of people this mm -hmm. means that we are uh, heading towards uh, our goal and uh, I, I think with uh, um, sustained uh, um, measurement and governance of training and what we are trying to achieve uh, we will uh, have uh, our goals uh, achieved uh, also we we uh, I think I think we uh, uh, we have good pillars now mm -hmm. uh, to build on we have um, uh, good infrastructure although we need more uh, but the broadband and the internet speed, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, five times faster than uh, what we had in, uh, in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we, we invested a lot on this, uh, in this uh, uh, area. We have um, a focus on education. We have new universities, as you have uh, mm -hmm. mentioned. We have uh, uh, more manufacturers of uh, tablets, mobiles, uh, and electronics, mm -hmm. and this is uh, a good news for us. Yes. Uh, so the social development itself, we have uh, uh, people who are who, who have been uh, in the, uh, engaged in training, uh, startups, incubation programs. A lot. Uh, uh, the ecosystem is uh, achieving a lot of uh, 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 mobility in in all uh, directions of Egypt. We 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 ha I see uh, start. Uh, from Aswan, from mm -hmm. Hurghada, from uh, Red Sea, the whole Red Sea, Sinai, uh, Alexandria. 
Yes. We, have, we have it there. And uh, also, uh, we have, on the other hand, we have uh, the implementation of the legal framework. And which is very important for digital transformation. Yes. Uh, data security, data privacy, uh, and implementing them on ground. It is not, it is not fa fast implementation, but as mm -hmm. I said, uh, uh, we will have um, as accumulative base, and then until we reach a threshold, I think in three, four years, mm -hmm. we will have the exponential growth. Yes. Well, Cyber security along with uh, high-speed internet, these are some of the topics that are being discussed in the 26th Cairo ICT 2022 conference that is currently underway. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The 26th edition of the Cairo ICT 2022 exhibition and conference continued its activities and will run until Wednesday with 400 Egyptian and international companies specialized in technology and communication solutions participating in the event. This year's conference is being held under the theme of leading change. The exhibition is the most prominent regional platform to bringing and reviewing the most important trends and technologies in the sector. This year's Cairo ICT session is taking place while government's interest in technology and its applications has reached its peak given the clear role that technology plays in accelerating the pace of economic development, improving attractiveness of different countries for investments and creating a distinguished business climate. Cairo ICT deals with many and more accurate areas including the impact of cloud commuting and joint international data centers on the sovereignty of countries as well as the issue of securing countries, institutions, companies and various entities from the risks associated with digital transformation by allocating a comprehensive approach to cyber security applications and technologies based on satellite communication. This is in light of the revolution taking place in the metaverse, which has become more mature after injecting a lot of capital into it and may result in a comprehensive change in the way people communicate. This is also after the most prominent global events have called for the importance of advanced financial inclusion applications by launching a new accompanying exhibition specialized in InsureTech parallel to the activities of the 26th Cairo ICT exhibition. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with Dr. Khalif to shed more light on the digital life here in Egypt. Now, Egypt has been ranked as the 23rd country globally and the fourth Arab country in terms of cybersecurity. Now, for any sort of industry uh, or investment or business to flourish, uh, flourish you need a certain sense of security and cyber security is part and parcel of the digital life and, and, and ecosystem in any country. Now, ranked fourth among Arab countries is, is not a bad ranking to have. Yeah. Now, how did we reach that fourth ranking and how can we even push it even higher? And is that enough to attract foreign investors and uh, create a healthy digital investment climate in Egypt? I think uh, cybersecurity is uh, the, uh, I would say, the core of mm -hmm. digital transformation. Uh, that's why uh, government is uh, looking at cybersecurity as, uh, uh, as key to all the government uh, services uh, mm -hmm. we are witnessing now. That's, that's why for the first time we have uh, um, uh, third party or private sector companies who are uh, recruited to test uh, uh, government services uh, for breaches for uh, uh, penetration etc and all the threats of uh, the cyber uh, security and uh, and th this has uh, this is new by mm -hmm. the way, uh, and uh, uh, this has created uh, uh, a demand for uh, professionals 
security professionals and uh, the feed from uh, the government training uh, by MCIT and the NTI, etc. And they are uh, allocating a lot of programs uh, for the uh, cyber uh, security. This has uh, created uh, a feed uh, feeder uh, to the, this uh, sector in uh, in Egypt, um, and uh, I think this is the main reason for mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, yani for acquiring this uh, uh, rank because now we have this uh, some sort we have awareness be, uh, among employees and among uh, among the government about mm -hmm. the importance of uh, cyber uh, security and um, uh, we will um, uh, we will need uh, uh, more of this mm -hmm. uh, by um, uh, redirecting our uh, um, uh, uh, yani what we th what we, uh, redirecting our efforts mm -hmm. to own the technology instead of using them mm -hmm. because currently um, yani i don't uh, i don't find a lot of startups working in this area and this is uh, part of the national priorities yes. i would say we have mentioned that we have we need to focus on certain areas mm -hmm. and we increase funding for uh, for uh, these areas cybersecurity is one of them mm -hmm. because cybersecurity is needed if you are uh, uh, talking about uh, security uh, of uh, agriculture application Mm -hmm. uh, if you are talking about security of uh, manufacturing uh, or digital application for manufacturing, for health, for education, it is uh, cross-cutting uh, technology which will impact the whole ecosystem. Yes. Uh, that's why we need uh, to have our own technology, not, not just to use the uh, uh, available vendors or mm -hmm. the international vendors we have to build our own um, r d centers and uh, really uh, uh, specialized in uh, cyber security we have already uh, a lot of talents uh, and if we collect and integrate again uh, them into uh, a holistic vision to secure Egypt, secure mm -hmm. all our applications, stop uh, breaches, leaks, etc. Then uh, we uh, we will have uh, a lot of impact on the digital uh, trust. Yes. And this is very important for people to adopt uh, digital transformation. Unless they feel they are, they are secure, mm -hmm. uh, they will they will be afraid of using online banking, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, will um, they will uh, be hesitant uh, um, in buying from in the internet, yes. etc. We we have to nurture this digital uh, trust by owning. Uh, cyber security uh, uh, technology and uh, raising the awareness mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, um, among all sectors, uh, um, government, uh, um, uh, academia, mm -hmm. uh, youth in, uh, uh, in universities uh, and uh, even in uh, schools we need we need to have this knowledge um, um, among all people and in order to to have this we need also the role of the media yes uh, we we need uh, to have uh, programs uh, a lot of programs i see uh, some mm -hmm. programs are uh, yani addressing this uh, issue and giving some uh, some sort of uh, awareness but we need more we need more related to uh, the cyber security yes dr khalif now uh, cop 27 concluded its activities and uh, sessions uh, less than two weeks ago and everybody's talking about the the environment and combating climate change now you've alluded to the use of the information communication technology um, applying it for the national interest and a green economy now after the COP27 with uh, all the outcomes and all the funding that have been uh, promised. How can we use the information and communication technology, the digitalization in terms of combating climate change? Uh, the World Economic uh, Forum uh, says that uh, uh, digital transformation can reduce uh, the uh, carbon emissions by 15 percent, which is good number mm -hmm. uh, and um, and given the magnitude of uh, or the impact of the climate change on economy on global economy uh, it is heavy uh, impact i would say it is um, uh, it will impact if we are talking about uh, the same base 
of what we have now, we mm -hmm. are talking about 14% decrease in the global uh, economy by uh, 2050. Mm -hmm. So this can be turned into an opportunity. So if we encourage our startups and uh, our innovators to tackle uh, this uh, area and we adopt uh, technologies in this regard, as uh, already Egypt started uh, this uh, this effort, we mm -hmm. Egypt uh, is organizing what we call the national initiatives for smart green projects, mm -hmm. and this is a joint uh, initiative between MCIT and uh, Ministry of Communication and Telecommunication, Ministry of Planning, uh, and headed by uh, Dr. Mahmoud Mahi Din, and they have uh, a lot of uh, winners uh, from uh, uh, all governorate not mm -hmm. only uh, Cairo uh, we are talking all governorates um, we are talking about advanced the technologies related to solar cells mm -hmm. uh, related to uh, uh, agri business related mm -hmm. uh, to um, uh, smart uh, manufacturing uh, which which is uh, important to lower the number of or, or the emissions uh, uh, the carbon dioxide uh, emissions mm -hmm. um, so we are talking about we have the talents we have uh, a database now of uh, a lot of ideas and uh, uh, already donors mm -hmm. uh, started uh, to uh, work with these uh, startups and we have opportunity and these uh, uh, th these solutions can be turned into digital exports yes well ladies and gentlemen as dr khalif mentioned results of this digital renaissance can hopefully should be felt within three to four years and by then hopefully we reach uh, a certain level of digital maturity within the egyptian ecosystem a lot to be explored and uh, a lot of efforts to be exerted within the uh, ICT sector. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my distinguished guest, Dr. Mohamed Khalif, the Innovation and Digital Transformation Consultant and member of the ASRT Council for ICT. Dr. Khalif, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Alf. Thank Thanks. you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on our international. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.